All right, guys, look at that sunrise in the background. Pretty beautiful place we get to fish in here. And the uh, only thing that really can make it better is a giant salmon. So salmon are our target today. We're gonna be trolling around. We're kind of in a unique place. I don't normally say where I'm fishing, but kind of set the, the background story, kind of tell you. So I'm in Half Moon Bay, and here in Half Moon Bay, they have a salmon raising program, and they release the fish in the harbor here. So they go out to sea, do their thing, and then the uh, natural instinct for salmon is to come right back where they came from. So, you know, obviously in, in the wild, they're coming back up the river, often to like the same exact tributary where they came from, where they were born. But when they're released here, their uh, instincts come back here, and there's no river here, it's just a harbor, so they kind of get stuck here. Sometimes people catch them in the harbor. But nice enough for us kayak anglers is it's kind of the one place where salmon come in close enough and congregate in big enough numbers for us to target them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And uh, I don't, the bite hasn't been red hot from what I've heard, but there are some fish around. So we're hoping, hoping we can get on a salmon today. There's so many pelicans here. Look at that sunrise though. That's pretty sweet. Also, forgot to mention one thing. Against all odds, that guy is working. And I remembered all the, the moving parts. So we have fish finder today. Hopefully it can help us locate some fish. Look at all that bait. There's a ton of bait in here. I mean, it's like literally all the way from 10 feet down all the way to the bottom. Stacked. And that's what these fish are feeding on. So we're gonna be using a crippled anchovy today, which is basically a frozen anchovy inside a little piece of plastic. And it gets it gives it a good spin. Enough spin to where these fish think it's a real live anchovy and they come and eat it. Literally like 100 yards out from the harbor on my way in. And I just hooked up. What the? I literally trolled for like three hours. At least three hours. All the way, like probably three miles out that way. I don't know how audio is probably terrible. The wind is super heavy here. I was actually on my way in. And I'm telling you, literally like a hundred yards from the harbor, I hooked up here. I assume it's a salmon. Seems like seems like it should be. What the heck? What are the odds? Oh yeah, whatever it is, fighting pretty good. Taking drag. There it goes. Play this one light. One thing with salmon is you're using barbless hook, so you don't want that pressure to you don't want to relieve that pressure at any point. You always want to keep pressure on the fish. Make sure those hooks can stay pinned in the mouth. And so that's why often when you first hook up, and even after when you're fighting the fish, I like to keep paddling just to get that additional pressure on the fish. And I haven't got a visual yet, but it seems like it's salmon. I'm not kidding you, I probably trolled like five miles, at least three miles in that direction, and then a couple miles out, and I was literally on my way back into the harbor. I'm telling you, literally like 100 yards, you can probably see it over my left shoulder here. Ooh, we just jumped. Definitely a salmon, 100% salmon. Keep them coming in close here. The other thing too with these salmon rods, you want to give a lot of nice bend in that rod. Okay, going for the net 
catch you up here. Ooh, he's only got one hook in the mouth. Definitely not hooked very good. No, nope, not ready yet. Coming around to this side. Okay. Here we go. yards you probably even catch one from the jetty if you were lucky enough Give it another half an hour to an hour. You always want to check your leader after catching a fish. Make sure it's not chafed up, especially when fish like salmon, they got teeth. I think this one was hooked right on the, the lip, so it didn't actually rub against the line, luckily. Which is why it came out, popped out right when it came into the net. Once again on my way in, you can see I'm literally like in the harbor already. Got hit. And honestly I thought it was a snag when I first got it. Didn't even have the cameras on. But it's definitely not. Let's see what we got here. Oh, a little link cod. Look at that. Must have been hiding in these jetty rocks. All right, right as we're headed in, little link cod, definitely not keeper. But, hey, another species. Not too bad. We'll toss him back. I guess. Now it's actually time to head in. All right guys, finally made it back to the harbor here. With all this wind, it was a bit of a mission to get back in, but we did it, no problem. And uh, just wanted to go over the setup I was using. So this is a nine foot G Loomis fast action, medium fast action. And uh, it's a great rod for salmon. It's really flexible. As you saw, you can't show it in the camera here, but the tip of this rod, really limber, so it can absorb a lot of the uh, shakes from, head shakes from those fish. Then we got a flasher and about three, four foot leader to a crippled anchovy setup with two barbless hooks there. Always have to use barbless for the fish for salmon here in California. And that's one of the reasons why having this limber rod with a real flexible tip at the end is uh, really helpful because that'll keep tension in your line and make sure that there's no slack. Because obviously, as we saw with this fish, the minute there was any slack when it got in the net, the hook came off. So you don't want that to happen before you catch it. And I have it on a Shimano Calcutta, what is this? Calcutta 400 here with 20 pound mono main line. I think it was a 30 pound mono leader. And then I've been getting some questions about my kayak setup. So I have it here. This is a Hobie Outback. I think this is a 2013 model. So it's about five years old already. And uh, 
the newer ones are really nice. They have upgraded seats and they have the front forward and reverse pedal drive. So this one is a little outdated now. Obviously it's still getting the job done. Okay, so we'll start from the front. So here's the front hatch. This thing opens up. It's pretty much watertight, so you can keep all, I keep my battery for the fish finder in there. I keep my tackle. You can get to it pretty much no problem when you're out there because this kayak is pretty stable. So here's the front hatch. As we move down, around, let's see here. As we go down, so one hold, pull holder there. This is my downrigger setup and I have this mounted on a scotty mount there. And this is perfect for salmon fishing. It allows you to control the depth a lot easier uh, than if you didn't have one. And I've gone over that in another video, but here's the downrigger setup. So that's there. This is the, uh, basically the steering wheel. Control the rudder, which is the next point down here. There's another back hatch. Honestly, I don't use this one very much, but it is there. See there's some water in there, I'll have to drain that later. Back hatch, uh, plenty of storage in the back. I like to put the ice chest back here. Most people don't actually, they like to have their the space open for other stuff. But I like to put the ice chest because it keeps the fish nice and cool. Uh, we've got another pole holder here. And then down, this is our fish finder. When I can get it to work, this is where it sits. It's a Ray Marine Dragonfly Fish Finder. I'll leave it linked in the description below if you want to check that out. Another pole holder here for the net. And then we're back up to the front. So, zoom out here. There's the full view. Let's go over here a little bit. Here's the full view of the kayak. Really nice kayak. It's got four holder, pole holders uh, preformed in the kayak that comes with it. And then you could add more if you need to. This Scotty mount here, when I'm not trolling for salmon, I can take this out and have a pole holder that I can put right in here. So that I'll add a fifth holder there. And uh, unless your name's Mr. Fish, I don't think you can carry more than five rods in the kayak anyways. Let's set up, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. It definitely is a lot more work than fishing on a boat, but I think when you catch them, it's a lot more fun. So I know the sound quality out there is probably terrible. So hopefully some of it came through, but honestly, it wouldn't be a Darren fishing video without terrible sound quality. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully the kayak run through, answered a few questions, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.